For nearly 40 years, Vicky Winans has reigned supreme as one of the best-selling and most influential singers in gospel music. And recently, she took time out of her busy schedule to speak with Black Music Archive about her life, career, but most importantly, her voice. This is an explained masterclass with Vicky Winans. My mom had 12 kids. She could sing herself. And my dad was a um, contractor. He built things. So my mom, we, we got all, all, everybody don't sing, but they do something musically. And then, um, you know, we sang, we would open up the window and people would stand outside and listen to us sing and harmonize inside. And then I started actually sing my first solo in church. It was about, I was about eight. No, 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 no. Grew up loving to hear Tremaine Hawkins sing, but she never thought of herself as a lead vocalist. Upon marrying Marvin Winans in 1978, she joined his siblings in a group called Winans Part Two. Uh, my first marriage, I, I, I wasn't singing that much. That's when Mario was born. When I met Marvin, we were in a group and got married. We went in. A, we were in a group called Winans Part Two, which was myself, BBCC, and a girl named Marvie. Right. Baby and Cece would soon begin their duet career, and unable to find members to replace them in the group, Vicky began to sing by herself. taking care of my kids. I had um, Mario and Marvin Jr. boys. And so I was taking care of them and I, and I was doing the singing on the side because I just like singing. I never just in my entire life ever dreamt I would be doing a solo. And after being married with Mario, I put my first record out, not until I was 33. <laughs> That record would be Vicky's debut album, Be Encouraged. Songs such as The First Trumpet Sound. Sweeter Than a Honeycomb and You Turn Me would send the record to number three on the gospel charts. But the smash hit in the gym on the album was We Shall Behold It. We shall The original is by, what's her name? Oh. Patty Patty. You know, when you make a cover, you need, you need to know that you're going to get this on a cross because somebody did it before you. Dottie Rambo was actually right. Written by Dottie Rambo and popularized by Sandy Patty, Vicky's rendition of We Shall Behold Him is a masterclass in gospel singing. People have always said you have a very big voice. I do have a big voice, but we all do all them parts with everybody. Vanessa Bell, Bay, everybody sang about the same. Okay. I mean, if you're going to get yourself your point across, gospel singers are power singers, basically. Gospel is feeling. Gospel is emotion. Gospel is intensity. And gospel, like soul, isn't something that can be taught. But the way singers in this genre communicate all of these things is usually by belting. Vicky's rearrangement of the tune was an excellent showcase of the strength and power of her belting range, and it was send it to the top of the gospel charts. It was number one so long, and then, you know, that song is not, I pitched it too high, probably. 
I was singing so high you can see stars at the end. I thought, my gosh. The song builds and builds until the end where Vicky says things long lines of singing on high end. They keep saying lines of high elf or high could suggest one or two things. She's a soprano who needs help with a belting register. But we see she can belt very well. That could also suggest that she's tired. But she doesn't look it. Or it could suggest that she doesn't belong to the highest voice type and that she's a mezzo-soprano. And for a mezzo-soprano, notes E flat, E and F are where they will begin to feel that they are singing very high. Vicky's performance of We Shall Behold Him and its accompanying album would send her into gospel superstardom. That's how I came out. I, that, it hit them airways, and honey, I ain't looked back since. And look back, she didn't. Vicky would make major moves, not just in music, but in business. My pancake and Jemima pancake mix and syrup have always been a Sunday morning favorite at the winery. A misconception is that gospel singers aren't able to have major careers outside of the church. But Vicky defied these odds by becoming the spokeswoman of major brands such as Quaker Roots, McDonald's, Chrysler. And she even led her own long-running television show called Sing Station. Very special guest with us today, and he is Douglas Freeland, who is the manager of the Voices of Tomorrow for the Quaker Oats Company. But what makes this even more impressive is that she did all of this on her own. I ain't never had an agent, period. If somebody looking for me, I don't need to pay nobody if they looking for me. Just pick up the phone and say hello. And so to be clear, your TV deals, your national corporation deals, all of that, you got those deals yourself. I sure did. They came to me. I know that's right. Yeah, I never took an attorney. I never took an attorney in one meeting. I don't need an attorney. I can read with the help of God and the blood of my knuckles. I built my entire career by myself. This would all culminate in her being a part of a prestigious group of gospel artists that would be among the first to sign deals with major record labels. And in 1991, she would release her major label debut, The Lady. One of the standout songs on the album is Don't Throw Your Life Away, and it's accompanying remix by a young and up-and-coming singer named Robert Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly did a, um, a remix. Mm -hmm. he, he was not R. Kelly at the time. His name was Robert. Barry Hankerson was the Winans manager. And he was also Robert's manager. Barry said, let him do a track to this song called Don't Throw Your Life Away. My son actually wrote the song. He did a remix, remix of mm -hmm. the song. I wasn't even there. And when I, when I got there and they played, he was gone. Mm -hmm. I said, how's somebody coming in and do a remix this bad? <laughs> The song will cross over into the dance and club charts, and Vicky will break new ground in gospel by performing the song at the Stellar Awards with backup dancers. Gospel hits, I recall um, the Stellar Awards, I think you were one of the first to bring dancers there. So, oh, my bad again. I mean, even if, just you even saying that makes me sick to my stomach. Here's my, my, my my model on that situation. First of all, I just got out here and I'm not getting ready to stop. But I, I went in the studio and recorded a cassette, about 150 of them, and sent them to all the radio, uh, radio stations. And, mm. and it basically said, I want to do the right thing. I wasn't dancing. I mean, it wasn't like it was me up there uh, <laughs> twerking. It was, <laughs> it was nothing. It was absolutely nothing. 
compared to what they do. Oh my God. However, I felt like this. I want to uh, win the sinner, but do it where you don't offend the saint. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. And that's what made all, that's what I said. And to those that were offended, I was sorry. I didn't have, I wasn't even asked to do it. Uh, the uh, Stella Awards wanted that. I wouldn't have never got any dancers. The album would garner backlash from the church due to its heavy contemporary and crossover appeal. That particular record caught the eyes and ears of secular artists. I did not sing that record, you know, to try to be secular because I'm not taking, I ain't going to be doing all that. Yeah. But it was contemporary mm -hmm. and it was very contemporary. And then I'm at MCA who really didn't want me to say the name Jesus. I said, oh, no, no. You know, instead of saying he, him, it, his name is Jesus. He got a name. Yes. And that's what I wanted to call his name. Yes. I, I want you to know that your version of Somewhere from that album is oh my, my favorite. And then the and then and the I, ending. Woo, <laughs> my Jesus of mercy. <laughs> also had to this day. Vicky's rendition of Somewhere from the musical West Side Story remains a fan favorite and one of the greatest displays of her technical prowess as a singer. From the onset of the song, you'll notice that Vicky has a strong musical ear because she's able to sing in the center of the pitch. Pitch is one of the fundamental, foundational core elements in singing, so much so that it is one of the most important, if not the most important quality in having a great voice. Imagine pitch as a circle, and in the center of that circle is the bullseye. It is in the bullseye that Vicky naturally sings. And because she has great ears, she's able to catch any part of the music and do runs like this. These kinds of runs can be found in somewhere also. Vicky has easy low notes down to low G. And these can be found in somewhere also. There have been some music enthusiasts who have compared Vicky's vocalizing to R&B songstress Anita Baker. And this vocalizing can be found in somewhere also. She's able to do these things because similar to Anita Baker, she does it by keeping the throat open. And because she's keeping her throat open and her larynx stable, she's able to easily transition in between her vocal registers. Vicky has a strong and developed head voice. extends all the way up to soprano high C. But something you'll notice about Vicky is that the upper third of her voice, she generally reaches it through a slide. Yeah 
or through a run. The way range works is generally like this. You have your highest comfortable sustained note, and then the two or three notes above that are notes that you can touch very quickly doing some sort of run or slide. Vicky's high sustained note in live performance is a high A. Vicky's high sustained note in the studio is also a high A and it can be found in somewhere. In a 1964 interview with American Theater, Shirley Barrett explained the mezzo-soprano voice this way. As a mezzo-soprano, I typically sing between low G and high G. I warm up using scales to high C, but those are not notes that I often use in performance. A high A or a B flat is the most that I would need. So, low G to high A is the general singing range of a mezzo-soprano. Low G to high A is the singing range of Vicky Winans' Somewhere. Low G to high A is also where Vicky does most of her singing. The same way Shirley Verrett uses a scale to run up to high C. Vicky uses runs and scales to sing up to high C as well. So this is a textbook mezzo-soprano voice, and Vicky's rendition of Somewhere is a great example of how this voice functions in all registers. So, and one more thing about this album is I, I can't let, I have to mention it, the cover. You are iconic for your hair. Okay, what? <laughs> Outside of the singing happening on this record, you can't talk about the lady without mentioning the cover. I mean, look at this gal. Look at this hair. As much as she is known for her powerful voice, she is known for her amazing sense of style. From the stunning suits to the stacked hair, and this iconic piece of cut that even Aretha Franklin had to borrow from her. Vicky Winans is a style icon in gospel music. Whose ideas were those? Like you were- uh, Oh, that's uh, me. Oh, that's me. That's yeah. all me. I, I, I did on my own. Well, I, I've, I've never had a glam squad. You are a fashion icon. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, we. Uh, yes, yes. I we your hair, the hair. I just cannot get over it. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, that's John. John good bad, but he's still bad. <laughs> he's still he's an awesome brother right here in Detroit. In spite of all the criticism that this record received, it is a testament to Vicky's knack for always being ahead of the curve and what was happening in gospel music. <laughs> Vicky will return to the Stellar Awards years later and sing Precious Lord in tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King, and it will be held as the performance of the night and will set her up perfectly for her next project, Live in Detroit. Let's welcome now for her 10th year anniversary, Vicky Wyatt! Recorded live in her hometown, Live in Detroit is a landmark album that brought out the who's who in all of sports, gospel, and R&B. And this record will yield her biggest hit to date, a remake of the James Cleveland classic, Long As I Got King Jesus. There's so been so many gospel artists that come out, they get one song and... They don't know how to get one to top that one. And then when long as I got, I still can't chop long as I got King Jesus, but I got so many other good ones. 
as long as God keeps Jesus, Lord have mercy. I can't bury it. I can't shoot it. I can't even do it. They gonna ask for that. <laughs> Off the heels of King Jesus, Live in Detroit would skyrocket to number six on the charts, staying there for over two years, just in time for the release of its follow-up. For part two, live from Detroit, Michigan, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage none other than the fantastic Ms. Vicki Wynne. Live in Detroit, part two. And this recording affirmed Vicky's status as the reigning queen of gospel. That's why I'm Her cover of Safe in the Arms of Jesus will become another hit. Her rendition of Already Been to the Water shows that she remains one of the greatest storytellers in gospel music. But always ahead of her time, the real standout on this record is the reggae-tinged I Hear Music in the Air. If Beyonce has Love on Top, Vicky Winans has Music in the Air because it is known for its 19, yes, 19 key changes. Similar to her rendition of Somewhere, this is another great example of how the passaggio, or the transition points in a mezzo-soprano voice, works. There are two muscles that control the voice. The TA muscle, which controls the chest voice and the low notes. And the CT muscle, which controls high notes. So when she starts the key changes, there's a transition happening at the bottom of the voice. But as you can see, she's singing pretty quietly, so the voice doesn't have to make a hard choice between which muscle it wants to use. Something else worth mentioning is her body language right now. You'll see that because she's singing pretty low and quietly, she's able to dance and move around the stage. So as she goes up in the key changes, you'll hear a color switch in her voice. The sound grows from ah. Uh, And this color switch in her voice happens at E flat, which means she has reached the mezzo soprano passaggio. So from this point forward, Vicky is now aware that she is singing high. The tonal change is happening because she has reached the passaggio. What her voice wants to do is use more of the CT muscle in the sound. This is generally an area where a mezzo-soprano voice would flip into head voice. But Vicky is a belter, and we still have five more key changes left. So what Vicky does from this point forward is very physically and vocally demanding and difficult. I 
she's continuing to bring that TA muscle or that chest voice up. So you'll notice a few things. Because she's taking the full voice up so high, the voice is starting to take on a raspy quality. But also, if you look at her face and body language, you can tell that she's doing some serious work to sustain these high lines of singing. This is some very difficult and athletic singing that's happening right now. So she completes the lines of high A flats. And you'll see she stops and only does one high A. Remember, Shirley Verrett said a high A or a B flat is usually the maximum that a mezzo soprano would need. That's the maximum Vicky gives us here. So again, it checks out. I'm glad about it. I'll sing about it. I'll shout about it. I'll dance about it. I'm glad about it. I'll sing about it. I'll shout about it. I'll dance. Live in Detroit Part 2 will keep Vicky's hit streak alive, outperforming its predecessor, topping out at number 3 on the charts. And in the midst of all the success, Vicky found time to start a new career path. In the midst of you have national ad campaigns, you're a national recording star, and somehow, some way, you found the time to start a comedy career. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was doing that already. Bishop Jakes told me. Bishop Jakes is the one who did that. Mm -hmm. He told me, he said, girl, I want you to go to Alaska with me flying, surely, surely we going on a plane. No, a cruise, a what? I look at Bishop, I said, you yeah, sure? <laughs> yes, and I don't want you to bring no music. I just want you to come make all of my people laugh. But Bishop Jakes is the one that started me separating. I was already clowning in between songs or whatever. My shoes was run over and overrun. They had something to say then. Oh, girl, you must be ain't, you must be ain't selling no records or song, song. But he said, girl, that's a whole nother career. And he was telling the absolute truth. And you released a comedy album. Uh, a I, few I, no, of I them. I have a comedy, I can, no, I don't have a, I have a, I, at the time it was a cassette, but now I have two volume one and volume two comedy DVDs that have sold like nuts. Some people are born the same. I don't consider myself a great singer, but I use that brain mind, hopefully, to try to, you know, to make people love you. It's a package, it's just not a voice. There are many talented singers, but one thing that separates Vicky from many others is that she understands the power of performance. To be able to emotionally connect with your audience and move them to tears, laughter, praise, and worship, all in one experience speaks to the power and showmanship of Vicky's performing ability. And none of this is captured better than on the Live in Detroit sessions. So she sings, she acts, she does comedy, sometimes all in one performance. It was no wonder that she was given the title, the hardest working woman in gospel. When, I, when they gave me that, I said, who, okay, who, who did that? <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know nobody did that. I didn't know, when I, I mean, but what it was, was it just has to be, it's not just about singing. It's about creating a brand. That's what, so I, I didn't even get a chance to brand me, they branded me. Because of all of my dates, I started putting my dates up every month. 
15, 16, 17 dates I was doing a month, which brought me to 200, almost 200 every year for about whoo, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. Wow. As I was busy. But working up to 200 nights a year would eventually take its toll. You had nodules and you got them removed? Yeah, I've had two surgeries. I've had two I had vocal surgeries. The first doctor that I had the surgery with was Whitney Houston's doctor. I had it done in New York. Overuse and probably not singing the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I had two vocal surgeries. <laughs> Having to sing like this night after night over large choirs and bands is a lot of work. Many musicians have likened gospel artists to opera and how difficult and demanding it is to sing. The voice is a muscle, and like all muscles, it needs time to rest and recover. So imagine having to sing 200 I Hear Music in the Years. It's not sustainable. But Vicky being Vicky, she would come out of this on top with the release of her next record, bringing it all together. Powered by the thumping single, Shake Yourself Loose, the album would be praised for its contemporary, fresh take on gospel music which is a completely different reaction than just a little more than 10 years earlier when she released The Lady. What do you think was the difference between releasing a contemporary record at that time when you released Shake Yourself Loose versus years prior? Because you were, once again, one of the first to venture out into contemporary gospel. Uh, you know what? I never even cared. That's something mm -hmm. they made. That's mm -hmm. been in the Bible. Sing what you're going to sing and sing it good, be anointed. Just sing. Sing hits. It's not about contemporary. They, they this is something, that ain't in the Bible. This is a man made up. So they can have a category for here, a category. I got, I got Stellas and contemporary, mm -hmm. traditional, mm -hmm. back and forth. I, I don't know what else to say. I've never, I'm never, I'm never going to be put in a box. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it. And long as they hit. It don't make no difference. You just make music. <laughs> you just want to sing. You just sing. You sing hits. Sing hits. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Sing the anointed hits. <laughs> <laughs> the anointed hits. <laughs> and hits is what she made. With the release of Woman to Woman and How I Got Over, Vicky would score her first and second number one album on the gospel charts. The fact that you produce your own material can you tell us a little bit about how you got into that? Because I had a, uh, a recording studio in my home and Marvin and Mario both left. One went to New York, one went to California. They got four kids and wives and I just left me. So I got on there and I not only do I produce them, I record them through Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. I do inputs, outputs, mics, all of it. I do it all being there by myself upstairs about four o'clock in the morning, I'll wake up. I feel like I can, maybe I can do some background. I go up there in my pajamas <laughs> and hook that sucker up. I produced the whole How I Got Over. Mm -hmm. Sung the vocals, recorded myself. I saw even on, you're even credited as a producer on some of um, the earlier records. All of them. All yes, of them. all of them. So how, what is your process for producing your songs? Yeah, see, that's what I don't understand. A lot of people be producing, they don't know they produce. If you were in that studio all night, like a studio bum, we used to call them, studio bums, you in there giving all kinds of information and you, and you, I can't, I, I can't even, nobody, I, I can't even let nobody do my vocals. I'm just that picky. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes, if there's a producer, they, they, they might, okay, you got a better one. I, I, don't, I don't need to hear that. 
I'll tell you what, I'll do the vocal and send it to you. And then we mix it and master it. Have Mick Fan master. <laughs> Today, Miss Winans is still using her voice to make people laugh, cry, and heal. And she's even branched out into the world of fashion with a best-selling jewelry line. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And no one embodies this more than Vicky Winans. Through her hard work, determination, but most importantly, her faith in Christ, she single-handedly made herself into one of the greatest gospel artists of all time. Is there anything you want to say like to the to the parting viewers? Oh, I love you, number one. Thanks for loving me. Y'all show me so much love until I blush. It's just black and black. Lord, they love me and I want to keep them loving me. I don't want to do anything to, to offend them or to offend anybody. Uh, people live how they live. I wasn't called on it. I was not born to judge. Mm. I don't judge people. I just don't. Because if I judge somebody, I'm going to have to live perfect for the rest of my life. And I might not be able to do that, you know? Yeah. But you don't judge. You, you, you help. And, you know, I, I, I can't even tell nobody, no. I don't even know if I could have could do, like, Sunday. But I can't tell you, no, you don't get a turn. Because somebody gave me a chance. Well, once again... I want to thank you so, so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Felice, I love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye.